on Larry King Now, Lauren Scruggs Kennedy. How did you walk into a propeller? It's a pure mystery. Um, some think it could have sucked me into it. Were you in pain? I'm assuming for sure. <laughs> you don't remember? I don't remember, and I'm so thankful. Are there many prosthetics? A lot. In, yeah? A lot, and I was so unaware before that. Doesn't insurance yeah. cover it? Not often. Even my friend um, lost all four limbs. She's my age, has two kids, young kids, and all they would provide for her were like hooks for her hands. And she's thinking, I am going through so much emotional pain and trying to raise my children, and you're going to give me hooks? When you go to sleep at night, you take your eye out. I do. He sees you without your eye? All the time. And without your prosthetic? Yep. Doesn't bother? Not at all. Yeah. He loves. He loves my little arm and he'll just like kiss this side of my face and say, this is like my favorite side of your face. Plus, have you ever taken it off in public? My husband would cry his eyes out if I did that. <laughs> he would not he want would, you to do it? He would love for me to do that. Try it. It'll, you'll break a code. It'll... Okay, let's do it. All next on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King Now. Our special guest is Lauren Scruggs Kennedy, author, lifestyle blogger, and entrepreneur. In 2011, Lauren suffered a devastating accident. As she exited a plane in the dark, she walked into a spinning propeller, resulting in the loss of her left eye and arm. After a long road to recovery, Lauren Scruggs is working to empower other young women on her lifestyle website and now with the Lauren Scruggs Kennedy Foundation. It would be hard to look at her and say that this is a woman who was in a bad accident. Well, whatever they did to work on you with no left eye and no left arm, yes. they did a good job. Thank you. Where was it done? It was all done in Dallas. So my eye doctor was amazing. I had a whole wow. team of surgeons and amazing prosthetists. All right, what happened that night in 2011? So I was at a house with good friends and we went on a plane ride in a small two-seater plane, and um, we landed, and kind of a rainy, dark night, we're up looking at Christmas lights, and got out and was hit by the propeller. Any other people hurt? No. Mm -mm. How many were on the plane? Two. You and? And the pilot. So it's you and the pilot. Were you dating the pilot? No. <laughs> You're married, right? Too. Yes, so I wasn't married at the time. I didn't even know my husband at that time. How well, did you walk into a propeller? They, it's a pure mystery. Um, some think it could have sucked me into it. The way I got out, um, I don't know. It's were you, I were you unconscious? I actually was not. I, I don't remember anything, but I was talking and making sounds and all that, so. And did the pilot get you to a hospital right away? How did it? So there's a group of people, and they called Care Flight um, and the police. And so, yeah, Care Flight was there really quickly, firefighters, um, all of that. Were you in pain? I'm assuming for sure. <laughs> you don't remember? I don't remember, and I'm so thankful. Or they, was the propeller making a noise? Most likely. <laughs> so you don't yeah. remember? I don't. And I always wonder if I'll have flashbacks to remembering. You don't have them, though? No, I never have. So what you're telling me is what someone told you. Yes. Yeah, a lot of it I have to ask my parents, like, what was happening. Even the first two weeks in the hospital, I don't remember anything, but I was very awake and talking and alert. When did they told you you had lost an eye? I think I woke up one day and I realized I have a patch on my eye I don't have my left hand, but I had apparently asked my parents over and over again, like, why am I here, all of that. But when I was conscious and just aware, but was still on a lot of pain medication, so it became really real when I was getting off that medication. You had no left hand? Mm-mm. What was this, a stump? Yes, so just part of my arm. We call it my little arm. Obviously, did a, that's a prosthetic, you were, yes. right? Yes, yes. Your left eye looks amazing, and that's a glass eye, right? It's um, actually silicone. Silicone? Yes, it's a new way that they're making them. Wow. Yeah. The, Sweet they do it. not, I've seen glass eyes. This does not look like a way. Yeah. They match your color exactly. Mm -hmm. He paints it. He's amazing. He actually has one eye as well, my prosthetist. 
Wow. Yeah. You have to take it out? Mm-hmm. I do. Every night? I do, yeah. Because you can't sleep with it? It gets, like, very uncomfortable and all that. Like contact kind of... lenses? Yeah, yeah. How about the arm? I take it off all the time. You said yeah. that the prosthetic arm made a big difference in your life. How? Um, I think because I was used to having two arms, I think just losing a hand made me feel incomplete. And so having another arm that made me feel like a whole person was really healing for me. So you met your husband after all of this? Yes, I did. How expensive is a prosthetic arm? So this one, they're all different, but this is a passive arm, so it has no function. And um, with the cosmetic covering is about thirty to 35000 You can't use it? No. So I have one that I can use. It's called a myoelectric. Um, I just don't like it because I don't feel like it's Why? feminine. <laughs> oh. And it just kind of gets in the way once you learn how to do everything. Now, what does the Lawrence Scruggs Kennedy Foundation for Women Who Have Lost a Limb Yes. What is its purpose? We actually provide the cosmetic coverings for prosthetic arms and legs, and then just walk through that journey with the women. One of my experiences was I didn't know a lot of girls that had had limb loss, and then I met Bethany Hamilton, who was in um, was bit by a shark over 10 years ago, and lost her arm, and she became a dear friend, and then just met a lot of other girls. Are soon there after. many? Prosthetics? A lot. A, yeah? A lot. And I was so unaware before that. Doesn't insurance so. cover it? Not often. No. Wait a minute. Very rarely. <laughs> you have health insurance? Yes. You lose an arm. Mm hmm It's not covered? What is covered? The sur is the surgery covered? They covered a lot of mine. I was a rare story, so they covered a lot more for me than the normal. But I started meeting all of these women that no one was covered, none of it. Like, even my friend um, lost all four limbs. She's my age, has two kids, young kids, and all they would provide for her were like hooks for her hands, and she's thinking, I am going through so much emotional pain and trying to raise my children, and you're gonna give me hooks for my arm? Like, I can't handle that. So your so. foundation will provide money, provide prosthetics? Yes, yes, so specifically the cosmetic covering. So. A lot of times, um, insurance will cover the basic arm, and then the cosmetic covering is what makes it beautiful and realistic looking. They do a nice job. Thank you. Is I all agree. that done in Texas? It is, yes, by an amazing family. Um, they started this business in their garage. Basically, everyone from around the world, they want to get in with Artec to have them paint their prosthetic limbs. What's the name of it? Artec. Artec. Mm -hmm. How do I get in touch with the foundation? So our website is um, lskfoundation.com. lskfoundation.com. Yes. And you get all the information there as so how people can yes. help. Yes, yep. And we have an Instagram at the LSK Foundation. Okay, we'll be right back with more. To learn more again about the Lawrence Scruggs Kennedy Foundation, go to lskfoundation.com. Up next, we're discussing how Lauren's accident has inspired her to empower other women. Stay with us. back with the incredible story of Lauren Scruggs Kennedy. You have a twin sister, right? I do, yes. How did she react to this? Oh my gosh, she's just such a rock. Um, Are you twin, exact twins? We're actually fraternal, so she has dark brown hair, um, naturally curly. What about your parents? They were just my strength and support. How and old were you? I was 23. They're incredible people. I respect them so much and I tell them often, I feel like you guys went through more than me because I woke up with my injuries, but they went through the trauma side of it of, is she gonna live? Um, is she gonna be the same person? Will she have the same personality? Will she be a vegetable? All of that and just quick decisions on surgeries and a lot of pressure on women to be beautiful. Now you're obviously beautiful. We won't Thank deny that. So Thank you, you. you didn't have the average case. Obviously, did you have scars? Did they have to? I do have a scar down my face, but they've, um, it's just healed up really well. And you cover it with hair? Not always. No, no. I don't see anything. <laughs> Thank you. Um, there's a lot of amazing doctors that, yeah, have helped. Has the accident changed your perspective on beauty? 100%. Tell me how. I realized that I put a lot of value in outer beauty, um, because that's what bothered me the most after my accident. Like, oh my gosh, I don't look the same. I'm so ugly, I'm not gonna fit in. No, 
man is ever going to love me because I don't look good. And I've truly realized, and I've heard this my whole life, that beauty is internal, and I've never understood that. But I think just your character and just how you react to even struggle in your life and then how you love other people, I feel like is so much more beautiful than outward appearance. And of course, the two can go hand in hand. How long it take to learn that? I don't know. I feel like... You never went through a period of feeling sorry and not really. looking in the mirror and saying, um, this is terrible? I you didn't? I definitely thought, this is terrible. I can't believe this is happening. But I never thought... Like, why me? And feeling sorry for myself. I think I, I was the opposite of victimizing myself and kind of rebelled against that um, mentality. When did you decide that you would use this to inspire other people? When I met Bethany and realized how much her friendship helped help me, I wanted to just extend that comfort to other girls and women because I... I understood it, and when I started meeting other girls, um, so Bethany and I created this retreat for girls that had lost limbs, and wow. yeah, super special weekends, and so just connecting with them immediately, because you're like, I don't have to explain anything to you, you get it, we have different stories, but same outcomes in a way. Wow. It was, yeah. What did you want to do when you were 23 before this? Oh my gosh, I had started a blog, I was reporting on fashion weeks. Modeling? Everywhere. More for fun, but not necessarily career-wise. And so, yeah, I feel like I was just kind of living life in a more shallow level. You were popular at school. and Yeah. How'd you meet your husband? His co-host um, reached out to me about a month after my accident. Co-host where? Well, from Juliana Ranzig from um, E! News. So how did you meet him? For, you guessed it on his show? So she interviewed me about a year after we connected, and she introduced the two of us. And this was after your surgery and everything? Yeah, it was a year after my accident. How did he deal with it? So when I first moved here, when we first got married, um, I felt like I had to explain a lot to him because he didn't go through all of it with me. So I had to explain fatigue and just a lot of things. And he has become one of my biggest supporters in even just being comfortable and feeling safe with who I am and knowing that I'm beautiful how I am and just encouraging me daily in that. When you go to um, sleep at night, you take your eye out. I do. He sees you without your eye? All the time. And yes. without your prosthetic? Yep. Doesn't bother? Not at all. Yeah. He loves, he loves my little arm and he'll just like kiss this side of my face and say, this is like my favorite side of your face and it's so beautiful. Quite a guy. Yeah. You think you're going to be associated with this accident all your life? Um, I think it's part of my story, so in some way, but I never want to be identified as that's the girl that got hit by a propeller. I think there's so but many... But you're going to be involved in helping people in your foundation. For sure, yeah. But you also do other things, right? I you do. You blog on other things. You talk yes. about lifestyle and... Yep, so I have a wellness lifestyle blog. Um, it's called LSK, so laurenscruggskennedy.com. And then we started a dry shampoo or launched that with um, my twin sister, her husband, and my best friend. A I'll few talk about ago. that in a minute. Yeah. What's the biggest misconception about amputees? That they're not able to do as much. And honestly, f my experience personally has been, it's made me more empowered because I'm like, even the things I had to relearn, it made me just more um, challenged to figure those things out and do them. And then I think it just, I don't know, it makes you a deeper person. and just have a different perspective on life. It's the lskfoundation.com, right, or .org? Yes, .com. Coming up, we'll discuss Lauren's new business venture and the best advice she ever got. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm. We're back with Lauren Scruggs Kennedy. The foundation is the Lauren Scruggs Kennedy Foundation where you help women who went through what she went through. She mentors, helps, and also provides prosthetics. You launched a dry shampoo line. You call it Stranded. Yes. What is a dry shampoo? <laughs> so basically, it's a powder that you put into your hair and it absorbs all the oils. So usually you'd have to wash your hair with shampoo, but instead you can go another day and just... You don't wash it? That. It can make you go more days without washing your hair. What, do you sprinkle hair. it on your hair? Yeah, kind of like How'd baby powder. How'd you come up with this? My best friend and I were living together, and she came home one day and just said, okay, we as blondes can use baby powder in our hair, dry shampoo, and it works great, but brunettes don't have that luxury because it makes their hair look gray. 
So we're like, let's create one for brunettes. And then we did the same for redheads. And yeah, we started in our apartment. Where do you get it? You can get it on thestrandedshop.com. Why'd you call it stranded? Anna, my best friend, came up with that. We had a lot of brainstorming, um, but we thought it kind of encompassed strands of hair. You're stranded, I need my dry shampoo. This is probably an impossible to answer. If you didn't have the accident, yeah. where would you be today? What do you think you'd be doing? Yeah. Would you meet have met Mr. Kennedy? No, you wouldn't have been on his show. I don't think so, yeah. I think about that a lot. I, I think I would be blogging. I kind of started it when it was all starting and um, started reporting on Fashion Weeks before bloggers went and it was more intimate and personal and all of that. So I think I just would have grown out of, you know, from that point on, but I don't think I would have ever met Jason. Would you still be in Texas? Probably. Okay, we play a little game of If You Only Knew. Okay. Childhood celebrity crush. I just love the Olsen twins. <laughs> it's not a guy, but I loved them and <laughs> okay. all, their, all their movies. <laughs> Secret talent. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Person you, it's not a court. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Person you trade places with for a day. Giselle or Tom Brady because I love the way they eat. <laughs> <laughs> Guilty pleasure. Really nice hotels. And spas. Mm. Agree with that. Mm -hmm. What superpower would you like to have? Would never want to pee again. Because <laughs> I have to pee so much and it just gets in the way. Like, we're running errands. I'm like, I have to find a bathroom. From the accident? I don't think so. I think I've always been that way. Something you wish you were better at? I think communicating sometimes. You don't think you communicate? Sometimes, if it's like a hard subject, um, it's harder to confront. Maybe that's a better word. Best piece of advice you ever got? That everyone has a story. Worst piece of advice you ever got? When someone says to compare yourself to another person or just see what they're doing and see how they do it. And I'm like, there's a small, fine line between comparison and men a mentor. Do you have a mentor? My mom's one of them. My parents as well. Who are your role models? My sister, my mom, my dad, um, my husband. Something you wish you'd all be paying more attention to? Just other people. I think a lot of times we can get so caught up in our own lives and own problems and just my dad always encourages me if I'm uh, just feeling ungrateful to go serve somewhere or to go help another person and then everything kind of falls into perspective. Something on your bucket list? I would say to go to Australia. What never fails to make you laugh? Anything related to gas. <laughs> <laughs> like farts. Peeing and farting. Just, uh, you got a hell of a life here. Is there something you long believed to be true and realized wasn't? I think that outward beauty makes you fit in. Also, you must have believed beauty was everything. For sure, yeah. You spent a lot of time in the makeup, in mirror. Not really. I no. think I would just think about it more. Um, but how you look sure. mattered. For sure, yeah. What's something we don't know about you? I'm addicted to gum. Gum. <laughs> What's something you can't do you wish you could do? I cannot nail a nail into a wall. That's right. You need two hands. Yeah. How about eating? I have a hard time cutting meat, but I'm not a big meat eater. So that's a positive. Seeing with one eye is okay? It is, yes. I don't have a lot of... Um, I have depth perception at times, or depth perception issues at times. But for the most part, I would never know that I've lost an eye. Get a driver's license? Yes. Lauren will answer some social media questions in our final segment. Don't forget the lskfoundation.org, right? Dot com. Dot com. <laughs> Dot com. We'll be right back. <laughs> We're back with Lauren Scruggs Kennedy. What an amazing story. Thank you. Very, you should be very proud of what you've done. Thank you. Some social media questions. Ash Bosch tweets. What's the best advice you've ever gotten when it comes to following your dreams? My dad actually told me, he was one of my biggest encouragers of just keep following what your passion is and like look ahead into it. So I was getting job offers that were just solid nine to five jobs while I was starting my own business. And he just said, Lo, you've got to keep remembering what you're wanting to do. Don't stray from that passion or vision and keep going confidently in that way. They must have been devastated when it happened, though. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Electro Chino, after everything you've been through, do you believe in a superior entity? Mm -hmm. 
And did your character change after the accident? I literally would not have been able to make it without my faith and without depending on Jesus through it all. And yes, I think my character deepened and I became just more self-aware and aware of people and pain and what that feels like. Some people might have blamed God. For sure. For the accident. Yeah, yeah. Didn't you have anything? I, no self-pity, no? I really didn't. And I think, um, like, I look back and it confuses me at times because I'm like, this is a really hard thing, but I just, I feel like and know that God just gave me the strength through every moment and every day, even when it felt impossible. I would just um, pray and read the Bible and talk to my friends and just felt so much strength in those moments. How long was the surgery, by the way? Say, I don't know, a couple hours for sure. The eye? I, and then I was actually hit in the head as well, so I had an amazing neurosurgeon and... Oh, you had brain surgery? Yep, yeah. There must have been a lot of pain. You may not remember, but... I really don't. Sam Raymond via our blog. What do people get wrong about you? I would say, I think people can be quick to just judge a scenario and just thinking, I think just unfortunate comments of how can you be so stupid and run into a propeller? And I'm thinking like, I don't know, I wonder the same thing. And I feel like I'm just not this blonde, like ditzy person. A lot of people have asked this, the best way to support someone who suffers something traumatic, are there things, for example, not to say? Um, I think the best thing to do is just be really real with that person. Like, I love when someone comes up to me and they're like, oh my gosh, can I like touch your arm? I'm like, sure, because it's just a part of me now. Um, but I feel like even just with good friends or family when they're going through something difficult, sometimes the best thing to do is just be present and you don't have to say anything. You can just give a hug or sit next to them and be silent with them and just let them process. Have you ever taken it off in public? I will wear it with long sleeves, but it's one of my insecurities that I'm working through. Paul McCartney's wife took her leg off on my yes, show. Yeah. Yes. Handed me the leg. My husband would cry his eyes out if I did that. <laughs> he would not he want would, you to do it? He would love for me to do that. Want to do it? You ever have the urge? What? Maybe. Wouldn't, wouldn't bother me. Okay. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Oh my gosh. Try it. It'll you'll break a code. It'll... Okay, let's do it. And what do you have left? It's um, so this is a liner, and then this is my arm. Let me see. Yeah. So and you it's just. It's actually really cold right now. It's like purple. And what does the <laughs> liner do? So this um goes over my arm and then locks my prosthesis in. So you kind of put it on like that. And then the prosthesis? Yep. Wow. Yeah. That's an amazing bit of work. Right? It's a perfect <laughs> left hand. Does it match your other fingers? It does, yeah. They actually took a mold of it. Um, now, didn't that feel good it. to take it off? Yes, thank it, you. I freed you up. You did. I was trying not to cry my eyes out. There's no, no reason ever to be ashamed of it. Yeah, thank you. There's life and it makes people, you help a lot of people when you do that. Yeah. What advice thank do you me. have for other young women out there who struggle to feel good about themselves? I would get say, prosthesis. I would say to not hide, just like what we went through. I think it just holds you back from living a free life. And yeah, I think just fully being who you are and um, not being afraid to be who you are. You're an angel. Thank you. Thanks for having me. The Lauren Scruggs Kennedy Foundation, and you'll learn more a lot about what they do and who they help. As always, you can find me on Twitter at King's Things. I'll see you next time.